Hey guys, what's going on? It's Dokonic here, and today we're going to be going over the Legendary Summons banner. Hey guys, if you're enjoying the content that I provide here on my channel, don't forget to hit that like button. And also don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications, that way you get the most recent and up-to-date information about Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle delivered directly to you. Thank you, enjoy the video, and have a great day. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about the banner before jumping into the card review. This banner came with the second year anniversary celebration for the global side of Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle. This banner brings a bunch of new cards, including an LR, a Hercule statue, and Elder Kai's. This banner is, was, depending on when you're watching this video, only available during the special Super Saiyan 4 Dokkan Fest event during the second year anniversary celebration. In this event, you're able to summon three times on either a Super Saiyan 4 Goku banner or a Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta banner and get the fourth respective summon for free. The only way to summon on the Legendary Summons banner is to get golden tickets so you cannot use stones. And you need 10 golden tickets to perform a summon and each summon only gives you one unit. In order to get the golden tickets, you must perform multi-summons on the limited time Super Saiyan 4 Dokkan Fest banner. Each multi-summon will give you anywhere between one to 10 gold tickets, which will be sent to your gift box. Once you've obtained enough tickets, you can summon on the banner in hopes of getting a really good prize. These tickets are only good while the event is live, and if you do not use it, you will lose it. So alright, now with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the cards. I did just want to state that an Elder Kai is available, so you can obtain an Elder Kai from this as a rule. Alright, so the first card we're going to talk about is the new Hercule statue. This is the diamond variant of what we're typically used to. This one is worth 5 million zenny, so when you get it, you can sell. Personally. I kept one for nostalgia purposes, for collective purposes, so I have one, but I sold all the others that I have obtained. Let's go ahead and actually jump into real cards now. The first one we're going to talk about is Flowers on the Battlefield, My Future. Her leader skill is Agility and Intelligence Type Key plus 3, and HP Attack and Defense plus 30%. Her super attack is Flash Grenade, causes supreme damage to the enemy and a high chance to stun the enemy. Her passive skill, On the Right Track. Agility type key plus 3, attack and defense plus 2000, and our link skills are Battlefield Diva, Brainiacs, Cold Judgment, Rival Duo, and Dismal Future. Her max stats are HP of 6690, attack of 6929, and defense of 3494. She has 130% 12 key multiplier. Now overall, she's not really that great of a unit. She has a decent leader skill if you're lacking an agility or an intelligence type leader because of that key plus three and the small little buff that she has. But her primary use is gonna be her passive skill. Her passive skill is agility type key plus three. The attack and defense buff is really low, but it's still there. You get 2000 attack and defense buff. But if you're lacking a good leader, She's a good leader for an agility team or an intelligence team. Specifically, you want to keep her for an agility team because of her passive. Uh, if you're lacking good links, she is super, super viable for you because she will at least allow your agility team to get their supers off or at least help them get their supers off. Next card we're going to go ahead and talk about is Time for a Quick Break Android 18. Her leader skill is Tech and Physical Type Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 30%. Her super attack is Infinity Bullet, causes supreme damage to the enemy, and attack and defense plus 30% for 6 turns. Her passive skill is more than capable, attack and defense plus 10% for every key sphere obtained, and her link skills are the Innocence, Twin Terrors, Android Assault, Battlefield Diva, Infinite Energy. Her max stats are HP of 6555, attack of 6929, and defense of 3561, and she has 130 12 key multiplier. Now, Overall, she's not a horrible unit. She will take some time before she starts dealing some damage. Um, obviously, you're going to have to wait for her to actually do some damage. I would recommend waiting until the Super Saiyan 3 Angel Goku card comes out. That's the 120 tech lead. I believe at that point she might do some decent damage. That passive skill kind of allows her to also be a nuker, so she'll be hitting a little bit harder. I wouldn't really recommend running her as a primary unit on the team. She's more here for collective purposes, but at least her super attack does allow her to slowly increase her attack along with her passive skill. The next one we're going to talk about is Girlish Mystique Videl. Her leader skill is Intelligence and Strength Type Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 30%. Her super attack is Eagle Kick, causes supreme damage to the enemy and lowers attack and defense. Her passive skill, Universal Prestige, attacked enemies attack minus 20%, and 
and recover 20% of damage dealt as health. Her link skills are Money Money Money, Battlefield Diva, Courage, Cold Judgment, and the Hercule Family. Her max stats are HP of 6623, Attack of 6659, and Defense of 3865. And she has a 12 key multiplier of 130%. Now I'm a huge fan of this card specifically because she's a good debuffer. She debuffs on her super attack and she debuffs on her passive skill. With the two of them mixed together, she will really lower the enemy's attack. And if you're running her on a Buhan team, she actually really helps with that debuffing because Buhan already debuffs the enemy and then you throw her in there and she does debuffs even more. Now, personally, I would not recommend running her if you do have all the optimal units. She would be fun to run just because of that passive skill. You could see how far between all the debuffers that you have on the intelligence, including that Buhan, to see how much you can get your enemy to lower their attack to. It probably, if you have a Buhan, though, you really wouldn't need her on your team. With that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the next card. Yearning for Adventure Pan GT. Her leader skill is Strength and Tech Type, Key plus 3, and HP Attack and Defense plus 30%. Her super attack is Kamehameha, causes supreme damage to the enemy, and defense plus 30% for 3 turns. Passive skill, act on principle. Attack plus 50% and defense plus 100% for 7 turns from the start of the turn. Her link skills are the Innocents, All in the Family, Kamehameha, Battlefield Diva, and GT. Her max stats are HP of 7028, attack of 6686, and defense of 3629. And she has a 12 key multiplier of 130%. Now, out of all of them, I think this is the worst card. I do not like this pen at all because she's really just meant to be a tanking unit, but she's not a good tanking unit. Her max defense is 3,629. I understand her passive skill is a defense plus 100%, so right off the bat she's getting a 6,000 or 7,200 defense, but it's only for 7 turns, and then you need to get her super attack off 3 times before it gets up or even higher. Now, after about two or three super attacks, as long as you keep super attacking with her, it's probably going to stay up and she's probably going to be a good tank. But there's way better tanks that you could actually run instead of her. Now, if you actually don't have a tank for a strength team, she does have that GT link and she does have Kamehameha. So that's going to be decent, but she doesn't have anything else that's super relevant. Now, out of all of them, I do not like her. She is not my favorite card. Last but not least, we're going to go over a Genius's Summer Vacation Bulma U. Her leader skill is Physical and Agility Type Key plus 3, and HP Attack and Defense plus 30%. Her super attack is Rocket Launcher, causes extreme damage to the enemy and recovers 7,777 HP. Her passive skill is Preparations for Adventures, Key plus 3 from the start of turn, and recovers 7,777 HP per Rainbow Key Orb obtained. Her link skills are Brainiacs, Rival Duo, Battlefield Diva, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, and Scientist. Her max stats are HP of 6825, attack of 6740, and defense of 3663, and she has a 12 key multiplier of 130%. One other thing to take note of, her maximum possible HP recovery per turn is 46,662. Now, while it's not available on the global side, you can Doken Awaken her. If you guys were lucky enough to actually grind out 100 monster carrot medals, if she does Doken Awaken on the global side, her new leader ability will be Agility and Physical Type Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 40%. Her Super Attack Rocket Launcher causes supreme damage to the enemy and recovers 8,888 HP. Her Passive Skill Research and Preparation, Key plus 4 at the start of the turn, recover 8,888 HP per Rainbow Key Orb obtained. And her new Link Skill should be Battlefield Diva, Rival Duo, Brainiacs, The Incredible Adventure, Guidance of the Dragon Balls, Scientist, and Shattering the Limit. Her new max stats will be HP of 7348, attack of 6980, and defense of 3851. She still has 12 key multiplier of 130%, and the maximum possible HP recovery per turn with passive and super attack is 53,328 HP. Now overall, either one of the variants of her card, she's not horrible. She does have a flat boost of what you can actually get with her. She is self-reliant so it's cool because she will be getting her super attack also you'll be recovering at least eight well not we're gonna round it up 9,000 hp per super attack so maybe if you're a earlier player and you're going up against easier events if you get her she might be a little bit more viable for you but the, she's way past her prime in terms of what her passive and super attack can actually do to help benefit the team i would not recommend running her unless you're using it just for fun now last but not least the one card that everyone wants. The LR that's on this banner, and the LR that almost no one can pull. 
Day of Destiny Super Saiyan Gohan Yu. This is the first stage available for this card. His leader skill is Intelligence Type Key plus 2 and HP Attack and Defense plus 50%. Super Attack Kamehameha causes supreme damage to the enemy. Passive skill, the greatest challenge, attack plus 12% per key orb obtained. His link skills are Super Saiyan, Saiyan Warrior Ace, Golden Warrior, Gaze of Respect, Kamehameha, and Prepared for Battle. His max stats are HP of 8367, attack of 8354, and defense of 4035. He has a 12 key multiplier of 135%, and he requires 77 final instant transmission Goku medals, which is available from the cell event in order to Doken Awaken. Now, he Doken Awakens into Fatal Resolve, Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Yu. His new leader ability is Intelligence Key plus 3, and HP Attack and Defense plus 70%. His super attack is Super Kamehameha, causes supreme damage to the enemy, and raises attack for one turn. His passive skill is Emotional Release, attack plus 15% for every key orb obtained. His link skills are Super Saiyan, Golden Warrior, Gaze of Respect, Kamehameha, Shocking Speed, and Prepared for Battle. His link skills are Super Saiyan, Golden Warrior, Gaze of Respect, Kamehameha, Shocking Speed, Prepared for Battle, and Fierce Battle. His new max stats are HP of 9994, Attack of 9365, and Defense of 4609. He has a 12 key multiplier of 140%, and he requires 7 Ultimate Clash Medals, or also known as the Battlefield Medals on the JP side, in order to Doken Awaken. Dogen awakens into the one and the only LR Gohan, Full Tilt Kamehameha Super Saiyan 2 Gohan Youth. His new leader skill is Intelligence Key plus 3, HP Attack and Defense plus 90%. His Super Attack Father Son Kamehameha between 12 to 18 key, or Father Son Kamehameha at 18 plus key. The 12 to 17 key causes Mega Colossal damage to the enemy. The 18 plus key variant massively raises the attack for one turn and causes mega colossal damage to the enemy. His passive skill, Father's Encouragement, attack plus 18% for every key orb obtained and key plus one whenever key is raised with key spheres. His link skills are Super Saiyan, Gaze of Respect, Kamehameha, Prepared for Battle, Shocking Speed, Fierce Battle, and Legendary Power. His new max stats are HP of 15,200, attack of 16,975, and defense of 8,806. His 12 key multiplier is 140%, and his 24 key multiplier is 200%. This, to this day, is still the hardest hitting card that is currently available in the game. If you are lucky enough to pull the base form Day of Destiny Super Saiyan Gohan Youth, make sure you keep him, lock him, and get him up to super attack 20 by any means possible. You could raise his super attack with the Gentle Hearted Warrior Super Saiyan Gohan Youth, which is the strength variant of that Gohan. He is currently available at the two year anniversary inside of the Baba Shop. You can purchase him, Z Awaken him to an ultra rare. He, that, that one does not require any Supreme or Elder Kai medals in order to Z Awaken him. Once he's Z-Awakened, it's a 100% chance in order to get that Day of Destiny Super Saiyan Gohan use Super Attack up by one level. So that is every single card that is currently available in the Legendary Summons banner. If you guys are lucky enough to pull that LR Gohan, good for you. I really, really wish I was you. <laughs> but anyway, guys, thank you for joining me here today. I hope that was informative. Hit that subscribe button if you're new here. Come help support the community, help the channel out. Hit that like button, and I'll catch you guys in the comments below.